today I want to talk about Fibronacci, which is my um, mid-candle study, but it's been reworked so much that I have renamed it uh, because it's really about uh, fib lines now. It's an auto fib generator. Um, and I'll, I want to go through a little bit about some of the changes and how it works. Um, it used to be based on a percentage change. Um, so for small caps, that's fine. It, it you know ends up being a 10% change in a dollar stock is really not that much movement in price. Uh, but as you get up higher, you know a, a 10 cent change here um, doesn't really do anything and 10% and would be a really huge move uh, for a $150 stock. So I based it instead on average true range, and that's how it decides um, how, to, how to draw these uh, peaks and troughs now. Um, and so what it does is it takes uh, the average true range into account when it looks at the, the peak versus trough um, in, for the look back period, um, which is also changed. It used to be in bars, and now it's based on a, a absolute time period, so um, in hours. Uh, and then it translates it to the number of bars that you would need per chart. So an hour um, in a five-minute chart is going to be fewer bars than an hour in a one-minute chart, which you know would be 60 bars. Um, so you can change the, the time period that way, um, which is the other big, uh, big change under the hood. Um, and I believe the defaults are to use the wicks now, uh, because for a mid-candle, I, I would rather use the body. Um, but I do have another script that is just to draw little mid candle lines on significant um, candle bodies. So I stopped using this for that and started using this to draw auto fib lines. Um, so the, the fibs that you can see here, these, these are the, color, the, the colors that I've picked out. I like to make them all the same color and then just change the brightness of them using transparency, um, which you can pretty easily do. And I think I've, I've shown this in my, um, the, the previous video for this, which is still valid for all of this stuff. Um, down here, um, but you can change uh, the the colors here. Uh, this this one is is set to be the the mid candle. Um, the fib zero and one hundred are a lot lighter, and the way you do that is you go into more and into any one of these other tabs. They all have a transparency. Um, so I use that same color that I used for the mid candle, I, and I just set them all to, as the same base color. Um, but then just you know jack the transparency all the way down so it's only you know 10% visible, um, which makes it a lot darker and it's it just keeps it out of the way uh, because I think the mid candles for me are, are the most important one that I look at. Um, but I also like the you know the 23.6 is fairly dim, um, the as well as the 78.6. But the 61.8 and 38.2 are the, the two main ones that I use um, when, I'm, when I'm looking at the, the retracements and trying to, to see where um, tr I should start looking for, for trend reversals. Um, so the, and here's the, the inputs here uh, that have changed. So the peak range hours show um, how many hours it's looking for uh, the last peak to trough change. So within any four hour period, it's going to see, and this is based on the, the current candle, so it's a, a four hour look back. Um, and, and you can see here that, so this is the 100% the mark and the 0% mark is here. So uh, down at the bottom here, uh, this is the low of the day and, the, and, and at the time it was the high of day. Um, and that was the biggest the biggest price and it has to get beyond this spike percent threshold. So this is, a, here it's, it's set as 15%. Um, and that's the percentage of the average true range that that price action moves through. So as the average true range changes, um, this will automatically adjust and and just base it on the, the spike percent for that that range. Um, and that's why you get this kind of stuttering stair step effect is because the uh, the ATR has been changing pretty dramatically in here, uh, but then it stabilizes and you get these longer periods where um, the, also the price has stabilized more. So there's nothing that is um, breaking beyond this initial, um, the, you know, so this, this initial uh, peak to trough stabilized here. There were a couple of, for the ATR, there were a couple of 15% moves in here, but then after that, there weren't any more. And so the, once the price stabilized, it forms this, um, new mid candle, you know, with, with all new fibs. So you can see the the one hundred percent line is the price to beat, right? So this is opening range two, um, you know, in, in this case. And once it breaks that decisively, you know that that's another, you know, it's another resistance area. This is where I would set as a profit target as it's coming up to here. Um, I would want this to um, either reverse and then take puts or hold and then you know sell off the the remaining shares higher up.
Um, and one of the things you, you can do is, you know, once you get confirmation, um, when, when you're still tweaking it, um, just making sure that you go back and make sure that you actually do have confluence between the price action that you're seeing and the lines that are being drawn. And you can do that by adjusting this peak range hours. Um, like if you want to see more detail, you want to see more of these um, steps, then you just change the peak range hours to be, you know, an hour. And then um, if you're if you're messing with this stuff, spike percent threshold doesn't usually work much above 40%. Um, it just sort of, it, it's all the same at that point. Um, but if you are ever missing mid candles completely and you've changed the peak range hours, drop the spike percent threshold way down and then start raising it up again slowly until you can dial in exactly where you want it to be for those, the, you know, that the, the peak hours and for that uh, particular uh, period on that stock. Um, so what with the, the, the four hours here, what this is showing me is a relatively stable um, mid candle here and what I want to look for are these bigger um, movements up here so when I narrow this down you can kind of see um, what I want for profit targets are going to be this uh, 161 line and then this uh, 200 line um, and, and these this this tends to be the upper range like once you have a stable um, line for the mid candle uh, you know the, the the for the high and low for this this fib range uh, peak to trough then y you will be able to start using these as the upper resistance levels and you can see that you know as it approaches it fades off and there's there's probably other lines back here um, like this this mid candle line here is um, older and just because it's drawn new ones doesn't mean that it's irrelevant. It's an old stable mid candle line and you can see that the price action does respect it to, to some degree here. Um, as it comes back it dips below it and then reconfirms it um, and then you know draws new lines. Um, so these these old lines aren't necessarily irrelevant anymore once it's drawn new lines. Um, so just be aware of that that you should be looking forward on those um, after it does draw new lines. Um, and the, and the other thing you can do is see, and there's, there is some confluence between some of these, like the 100% is the 200% uh, on this range, um, because that's, there's, you're going to find a lot of confluence like that, and that's why price tends to respect these areas. Um, but as price is going up, if this had been a stronger move, I would expect it to, uh, I would expect to have a profit target up here, which eventually by the end of the day, it got close. Um, and if it does break through that, I would expect it to not make it too much further past this line um, unless it's really strong and it just keeps going. And it depends on, you know, obviously if this were a one hour, then it would break through an awful lot of those. Um, but they are good gauges, you know. So once you once you play with it a little bit and you understand how it works for you and for the, the equities you're looking at, it, it can be... Um, it can be a pretty pretty nice gauge if you're not quite sure um, where supply and demand lines may be. Um, a, a lot of times you'll see these line up with supply and demand and daily resistance lines just because that's you know this is the underlying math of where they come from. Um, that plus the the actual price action. So once it starts moving again, um, and and again these lines aren't irrelevant, but they do become um, you know the. The, the new lines that are drawn here, these, these fib lines are for this area and then, you know, going forward, what we're looking at for the next, um, you know, the next range. And you can see that there's, there's some confluence here between, this is the, the 161 lines of both match up. And that's just, you know, because mathematically the, you know, the Fibonacci numbers between this peak and trough and this peak and trough are related in the price action. Um, so when you see stuff like that, you can, you can tell that it's, you know, when, when you have this, this sort of confluence that it's probably going to be respected. And in fact, the price never rose ab above this, even after hours. Um, and that's just, you know, sort of how it works. So that's a little how I use it. Um, and, and on different time frames, obviously it's going to look different. So if you go to like a, a four hour, um, actually, I don't think it's showing up on above four hour on this one. Um, Oh yeah, no, it should be, but you would need to change the because the peak range hours are, are going to be way too small. It's a four hour chart, and having a peak range of four hours is not going to work. So you would need to um, make that a lot more. Um, and actually, I've never tried this before, so we'll see how this works. But 
Um, yeah, it's gonna, you need to dial it in a little bit, but this is how you'd use it on a higher chart, is you just change the number of hours that you're looking back. Um, and obviously, if you want it more, um, more useful, you're gonna want much bigger numbers for, for you know, daily charts to, to get overall trends because four hours doesn't make sense on a four hour chart. So you'd use something like this and you can see that, and this is another example of how we've got a previous mid candle from, from way back up here. This is the, um, the brighter ones I've just got set as the mid candle and that's where the upper, upper price bound was. Um, and that's, that's where it reached you know, a couple days ago. So these, these lines are still relevant into the future um, even if they're they're not being you know if they if they've drawn new lines um, since then these older more stable uh, mid candle lines are definitely something to look at in terms of um, at, at least being aware that that's where price could reverse um, looking for confluence in other areas like supply and demand zones um, like support and resistance lines those are always going to be um, you know your, your your deciding factors. Um, but one of the things I like to do in my trades is find three things. What three things support um, a reversal here? And for me, this could be one of them where I've got a previous very stable mid candle. Um, that would tell me that that's going to be resistance because when you have a, a, a mid candle above where the price action is, that's going to act as resistance. And if it can break through and hold it, then it's going to act as support, just like any other support and resistance lines. Um, it's just that these move based on the the average true range, the price action peak and trough, and the, the range that you choose um, along with the, the spike percentage. So those are the things that you need to, to look out for when you're um, messing around with these, um, you know, in, in different time periods and trying to get them to, you know, make sense for you. Um, just play around with it and see what works. I mean, a lot of this, it, it ends up being kind of spooky how you, you get the right values in there for the for the stock that you're in and it just respects the hell out of them um, so anyway i would uh, love to hear if it works for you or if you have any suggestions to make and um, you know hope you enjoy